Welcome to Get Sleepy, the podcast where we listen, we relax, and we get sleepy. My name's Thomas, and it's my honor to be your host. Thanks for tuning in this evening. In tonight's story, we'll explore the winding halls and secret passageways of a mysterious house. Eventually, the route will lead us to deep and rejuvenating sleep. Let's take a moment to relax and let go of the day so we can really enjoy drifting off with tonight's story and nothing else. Like for many people in the UK, Easter weekend was the first time I saw some family for a number of months. And I was speaking to my lovely mum and dad about sleep and how I definitely take after my mum, who often finds her mind is busy and overactive at night. Whereas my dad is the type who's asleep within a couple of minutes of his head hitting the pillow. Fortunately for my dad, he doesn't really have to put any thought or internal method into this process. It just happens. But he did have some advice for me that he'd heard recently from a great spiritual mind. Advice about how to respond to our busy thoughts at night. And you know I'll always share any tips I think could work for you to help you quiet your thoughts and get a better night's sleep. So the suggestion is that when these thoughts arise and try to catch our attention, simply say to them, not now. Two simple, short words. But could there be any two words more appropriate as a response to these untimely burdens. So with that being said, take a nice deep breath and let your focus rest on your breathing. Slowly drawing the air in through the nose. and gradually releasing it back out. As you continue to breathe a little deeper, I'm simply just going to be quiet for a few moments and give you some time to let your mind do whatever it pleases. Just allow it to move freely without judgment and without trying to stop it for the next few moments. And now bring your attention back to the present moment, back to your breathing. It's time for you to settle and to sleep. So from here on in, if you find that your mind brings up disruptive thoughts, or anything that stimulates it. Just say, not now, to those thoughts. It's as simple as that. Say, not now, and let them go. So as you listen to this wonderful story, your imagination can concentrate completely 
on the sights and sounds that I describe. So, let's turn to our story. Picture a door in front of you. It can be any shape, material or colour you imagine. On the other side, you'll walk into the story, or perhaps straight into sleep. Now, reach out and turn the handle to enter. This is where our story begins. You find yourself standing in a grand entrance hall, decorated in a Middle Eastern style. Seemingly, every surface is covered in shining mosaics or intricate blue and white tiles. There's very little furniture, just some decorative vases and lanterns resting in alcoves, and a couple of long benches lining the walls. A grand staircase sweeps upwards, spiralling out of sight. It looks as though you could be in a museum, you think, but there are no signs and no other visitors. So perhaps it's a grand house. You wonder where you are and how you got here. It doesn't quite feel real. The room has a soft, dreamlike quality. Wherever you are, you're happy to be here and curious to explore further. Before you is a small, angular fountain sunken into the floor. You step closer to admire it. The tiled borders around it are beautifully decorated with painted vines and geometric patterns. But the fountain itself is simple. It's just a square with a single spout in the middle. The water trickles out gently, flowing down into the basin. It's deeply relaxing. You're tempted to linger for a few more moments, perhaps reclined on one of those benches nearby. As you listen to the soothing flow of water, you gradually become aware of other sounds. You can hear a soft tapping and something like the rustling of feathers. You look up from the fountain and are amazed to see a peacock on the far side of the room. It's spectacular, with its large fan of feathers on display, full of shimmering, iridescent blues and greens. For a moment, you simply stand there, transfixed by the beauty of the bird. Its appearance in the room is just as mysterious as your own. Where has it come from, you wonder? 
from the staircase, perhaps? For the first time, you spot the arched doorways near the back of the hall. They're not doors, but open entrances, two on each side of the room. Both are marked by gleaming white columns and a dazzling mosaic sign. Although you can't read the language of the signs, you notice that each door has a different symbol above the arch. One has a moon, another a shell, the third a flame, and the last has a bird. The bird symbol can't be a coincidence. You look at the peacock, then again at the doorway on your left. Peering through the entrance, you can see nothing but a dark hallway lined with lanterns. You have no idea where it leads, but you're in a curious mood, so you decide to keep exploring. You'll follow your instincts and see where they take you. You walk through a long, dimly lit hallway. There are small alcoves in the walls, some filled with vases and others with beautiful, golden ornaments. In the soft light of flickering lanterns, It's difficult to make out the details. All around you, there's a lovely smell of flowers and some other comforting, familiar scent. You're not sure exactly what it is, but it takes you back in time to a distant memory, a vague recollection of some happy moment. You slow down, closing your eyes to savour the scent. As you breathe in deeply, you gradually become aware of something else. The faint sound of music. It must be coming from another room, somewhere at the end of the hall. You continue walking, on and on, until a new source of light begins to emerge. This time, it's not the amber of the lanterns, but something white and brighter. The doorway at the end of the hall leads into a vast, palatial room, lined with ceiling-high windows that let in the daylight. Before you explore the rest of the room, you go up to the window and press your face to the glass. For the first time, you have some idea of what lies beyond the walls of this mysterious house. The building is surrounded by an exquisite garden. With its manicured lawns and flower beds, it looks almost too perfect to be real, like something from a painting or the gardens of a royal palace. Turning away from the window, you inspect the room more closely. At first glance, it seems there are no other entryways, save for the one you came through. Could this beautiful room be a dead end? If so, you can always go back to the entrance hall and pick another direction to explore. 
but as you look around the room, you wonder if there could be a solution. Although you can't see another entrance or exit, you feel instinctively that there must be a way out. It may only be a hunch, but as you make your way through these magical rooms, you have only your instinct and imagination to guide you. You move away from the window and slowly walk across the room. The only sounds are your footsteps on the wooden floor and piano music. The melody is louder than before, but you're not sure where it's coming from. Perhaps the lilting, waltzing music is a clue. If you follow the sound, it might lead you to another room. Or perhaps it's just music and nothing more. It may simply be a beautiful but insignificant part of the background. Like the red drapery of the curtains or the glass chandelier hanging from the ceiling. You look up, noticing for the first time the breathtaking fresco above you. It's a vast painting that covers the entire ceiling. A bright blue sky, swirling clouds, and a banquet table overflowing with food. Around the table are men and women talking and laughing as they eat. It's a stunning work of art, resembling a renaissance masterpiece. But as beautiful as it may be, you doubt that it's a clue. The way to the next room must be through the furniture or walls. You run your fingers over the panelling and touch the marble mantelpiece above the fireplace. It feels pleasingly smooth and cool. Then you turn your attention to the nearby tables and chairs, gently shifting them into different positions. You might uncover a secret switch or panel. Anything is worth a try. As you're moving a chair back into place, you catch sight of the peacock on the other side of the room. It pays no attention to you and continues its relaxed stroll across the wooden floor. The reappearance of the peacock strikes you as a positive sign and encourages you to keep looking. There are a few old books on the side table next to the chair. Perhaps one of them hides a clue. A key or a note tucked between the pages. You begin to leaf through them, hardly noticing the words. Most of them are titles you've never heard of, except for one. Through the looking glass and what Alice found there. There's nothing in any of the books. No keys, no notes. You're on the point of giving up and returning to the hallway. But when you look up from the book and scan the room, you notice that there are now two peacocks. Two birds walking side by side. 
Then you look closer and realize that one of the birds is a reflection, a mirror image. There's only one peacock standing next to a mirror embedded in the wall. You hadn't noticed it before, perhaps because there's no frame. It blends seamlessly into the rest of the background. You consider the title of the book, Through the Looking Glass. Is it a coincidence, or could it be a clue? You get up from the chair and walk towards the mirror. It's so clean, so perfect, that you're almost reluctant to touch it. But careful exploration is the only way forward. You take a deep breath and gently push the mirror. nothing happens. You study the edges of the mirror, noticing how it connects smoothly with the surrounding wall. There's only one imperfection, a kind of mark or groove on the right side. You touch it to see if it leads to a space behind the mirror. And then, as if by magic, the mirror starts moving. It slides quietly to one side and reveals a secret entrance to another room. You enter, leaving the mirror door open behind you. This room is much smaller and feels both bright and cosy. It's filled with beautiful potted plants of all shapes and sizes, lined up on the floor or displayed on the shelves. A single large window looks out onto the garden. The sunshine streams through the glass casting rays of light on the red walls. Each wall in this room has been painted a deep, luxurious shade of red, except for the borders. The edges have been left white and filled with intricate little paintings. There are floral patterns, horn-shaped containers overflowing with fruit, and tiny portraits of humans and animals. The style is old-fashioned, even ancient. It looks like it's been inspired by the villas and palaces of ancient Rome or Pompeii. There's only one other door in this room, one made of dark wood to your right. You try the handle and discover that it's locked. But if it's locked, that means there might be a key somewhere. This time, the puzzle should be easier, you think. There are only so many places you can hide a key in a room this small. If it's not beneath the rug, it will be under a pot, or inside the pot, or somewhere on a shelf. You take your time exploring the room, lifting the rug and carefully rearranging the plants but there's no sign of a key. Turning to the wall, you notice that the ray of sunlight has shifted. 
You're not sure how long you've been in this room, and you have the pleasant, dreamy sensation of losing all track of time. But it seems you've been here long enough for the sun to move, illuminating a different section of the wall. You study the column of painted figures here. Many of them are humans standing side by side with an animal companion. There's a man with a horse, a woman with a dog, children with birds. And then you see the peacock next to a woman in an elegant white dress. The painting must be a clue, but you're not sure how. With the large image of the bird in your mind, you begin to search the room again, checking for anything you might have missed. You look at the plants in more detail, noticing the variety in shape and size. You run your fingers through the soft fronds of a fern, which are as light and delicate as paper trimmings, and stroke the scented leaves of a lavender plant. You notice the shiny, glossy texture of the orchid's leaves and the shadow the palm tree casts on the wall. And then you see it, tucked among the leaves of the palm is a single shining peacock feather. As you pull the feather from the leaves, you're surprised by the sensation of weight. But then you see what's attached to it, a small silver key tied to the end of the feather with a ribbon. You put the peacock feather back where you found it, then walk up to the locked door and try the key. It's exactly the right size and shape. You put it into the lock and turn it to the right. With a satisfying click, the door opens. You spend the rest of the afternoon slowly exploring different parts of the house. Each room is more magical than the last, as you discover a shape-shifting library, a hall of lights and mirrors, and a puzzle in the shape of a fish pond. There's always more to discover, but when you feel tired, you find a comfortable place to sit and rest. After solving another puzzle, you decide to take a break on a nearby sofa. As you recline in a pile of cushions, you gaze out the window. It's the first time you've looked outside in quite a while, as you've been so focused on the rooms. The view is the same as before, the beautiful gardens around the house. You're higher up now, so you can see further, beyond the flower beds to the trees and distant fields. The light is different too. Without you noticing, day has transitioned to dusk, and the sky has become a soft, 
grayish blue. Knowing that night is falling makes you feel even sleepier. You begin to grow tired of walking and exploring, despite the beauty and mystery of the house. You find yourself suddenly longing for a bed, imagining the luxury of sinking into a soft mattress. You decide to explore just a little bit further, with the hope of finding a bedroom. You get up from the sofa and cross the hall to a spiral staircase. As always, you have no idea where it leads, but your instinct has guided you well so far. Up and up and up you go. You're walking more slowly now as the sleepy feeling spreads through you. When you reach the top of the stairs, you find yourself standing in a large, circular room. It's completely empty. You look around for a chair or sofa, but there's no furniture at all. There are also no windows or doors. But the walls are decorated with some of the most beautiful paintings you've ever seen. Gorgeous, dreamy patterns that spiral around the room. You look up and see that the art on the ceiling is even more astonishing. You're gazing up at a vast, painted peacock feather. A glimmering blue eye surrounded by rings of green and turquoise. Although you know it's only a painting, there's something different about it a strange light and a sense of richness and depth. You want to get a closer look, but the ceiling is high above you, and there's no way of getting to it, nothing you can climb. Without furniture to investigate, you can't even look for secret clues or keys. The logical part of your brain tells you to go back, to descend the spiral staircase and look for another way. But at this stage in your journey, you're more inclined to listen to the creative part of your mind. There has to be a way up, you think. The light in the room is too dim to see the details clearly. So you decide to use your sense of touch instead. With your eyes closed and your arms outstretched, you begin to walk around in the room in slow circles, brushing your fingertips over the surface of the wall. These dreamy, meandering movements relax you. You're focused only on your breaths, your steps, and the cool, smooth surface that you're touching. After a while, you're so deeply relaxed that you could almost fall asleep right here, on the soft carpet. And then you find it. 
a small switch beneath your finger. You press it, and then open your eyes, curious to see what secrets will be revealed. Despite all the magical things you've seen so far, you still can't quite believe your eyes. At the center of the room, a large, circular patch of carpet gradually opens up, revealing not a hole, but a step, then another, and another. It's a silver spiral staircase, slowly rising out of the floor towards the ceiling. You realize that this must be the way to the next room. Once the movement of the staircase has come to a gentle halt, you walk onto the first step, and then the next. Although you're focused on carefully placing your feet as you climb, you can't resist glancing upwards for just a moment. You gaze in wonder at the magical sight above your head. The feather on the ceiling slowly turns and opens. It's no ordinary painting, but a door to yet another room. You climb up through the opening and walk into a beautiful, softly lit space. There's a plush purple carpet in keeping with the rest of the room. The walls, curtains, and other furnishings all seem to be shades of purple, or perhaps it's only a trick of the light. You're so sleepy that you can hardly tell the difference between reality and illusion. There's only one thing you can be sure of. The presence of a huge four-poster bed in the middle of the room. It's like something you would expect to find in a luxury hotel or a palace. There are two rows of fluffy white cushions and a lavender-colored quilt that looks wonderfully inviting. Then you spot a neatly folded pair of pajamas. Now you understand. A good night's sleep in this cozy bedroom is your reward for solving the puzzles. You change into the pajamas and slip under the covers. The sensation of the soft sheets and pillows is blissful. Just as you floated into this room, you can see yourself floating into sleep, into sweet dreams, relishing the comfort of the bed. You close your eyes, take a deep breath, and fall fast asleep.